In Python, the attributes of any object can be changed by any function anywhere in a program. Now that means that we can mutate a recursive list if we create it using the recursive list class that we've been analyzing for the last week. So recursive lists can change. They're mutable. An attribute assignment can change the first and the rest attributes of an R list. A recursive list is constructed with the first element and the rest of the list, which may be empty by default. Empty is a class attribute of the R list class, which is an instance of the empty list. The empty list is just something that happens to have length zero. Okay, I've left out um, the methods in this class that compute the length or get particular elements because we're not going to use those right now. Instead, we'll just focus on passing in the first and the rest. And this constructor sets the first and the rest attributes of the new recursive list that's created to whatever argument values are passed into the constructor. And here we're passing in to the constructor one and the result of constructing another recursive list. Okay, so if we load up this file into Python, and we have our R list class, and we have S, which is an R list with first element one, second element two, and third element three. We could actually change this however we want. I could set the T to be the rest of this list, and I could set the rest of this list to be 12. Okay, so what is S now? Well, S is still an R list object where the first element is one and the rest is 12. This is no longer a well-formed recursive list because the rest of the list isn't a list anymore. It's just 12. So Python isn't gonna stop us from doing it. The only place in which we assert that the rest is well-formed is in the constructor. We don't actually ensure that rest is the right kind of thing every time we assign it. There's a way to do that with property methods, but we're not gonna go into it. Okay, so let's uh, put the rest back to what it was before. So now uh, everything works like it's supposed to, which is great. Um, let me show you something that you can do with a recursive list because it's mutable. The rest of a recursive list can contain the recursive list as a sublist. Let's look at an example. Say I create S as one, two, three. So I've effectively created a structure that looks like this. Now the actual environment diagram for classes and objects and instances is much more complicated. But conceptually, we have the name S bound to an object, which has a first and a rest, and the first is one, and the rest is a recursive list as well. So that's the kind of thing that we're dealing with so far. And if we set S.first to be five, and T to be S.rest, then here's something interesting we can do. We can set the rest of T to be S. So what have I built? Try to figure out what the following two things We'll evaluate two. What's s dot first? Well, that's five because we set it up here and we haven't changed it since. And how about s dot rest dot rest dot rest dot rest dot rest dot first? What's that? Well, that's two. Why is it two? Because what we did is we had s as something with the first element five. We set it here, and then the rest of the list was two three. We set t to be bound to the rest of that list, and then we change the rest of t to be s. Thus, in a box and pointer diagram, we'd say that what the rest of t is, is s itself. So when I found the rest of the rest of the rest of the rest of the rest and its first element, that's how I found the number two. So a recursive list that has a cycle in it is no longer a well-formed sequence because it doesn't have a finite length. But it is a well-formed recursive list because it has a first element and the rest of each list is another recursive list. 